Welcome to our webinar this evening, Start Your Personal Brand with an Elevator Speech, being presented by John Fisher and sponsored by SCORE Suburban North Cook and Lake County Chapter. I'm Al Blitz, a SCORE mentor, and I'll be serving as today's moderator. Um, please submit your questions using the Q&A function at any time. And um, we welcome all of your questions. We'll, we'll have a Q&A session with John at the end um, and we should be in good shape. Now, this is a webinar, so we're not able to hear any of the attendees, but your questions will come in through the Q&A system. We just hope you can hear us okay. Please, um, if necessary, obviously adjust your audio. And uh, we look forward to hearing from you during the webinar, again, with your questions and for a Q&A with John at the last 15 minutes. Okay, Claire McCauley, welcome from the Glenview Public Library. Thank you for co-sponsoring this event this evening. And um, would you like to share a few thoughts with our webinar attendees? Hi, everyone. I just wanted to say thank you for joining us tonight and thanks to SCORE for partnering on this program. Uh, I'm Claire and I'm the business librarian at Glenview Public Library. Um, I did want to mention a couple upcoming programs that we have that you might find helpful. Um, one of them is called Creating Your Side Hustle and that's going to be on Monday, April 26th at 7 p.m. It'll be a Zoom program. Um, for that, Lauren Milligan of Resume Day will discuss different options for um, side gigs or side hustles and tips for getting started. So I'll put the registration link for that in the chat. Um, I did also want to mention that we do partner with SCORE to offer one-on-one -on -one mentoring sessions. And we have those at least once a month. Right now they are happening virtually. Um, so if anyone is interested in signing up for one of those, I'll put the registration link in the chat for that as well. Um, but I just wanted to say thanks again to everyone for coming and thanks again to SCORE for partnering on this. Hey Claire, our pleasure. And um, I know you want to watch the webinar, so we're going to change your role to attendee. And we look forward to future uh, webinar collaborations. And uh, again, we appreciate the opportunity to be uh, working with the library for a number of years on uh, mentoring services. It's one of our more um, sites uh, and uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. So enjoy the webinar, everybody. Uh, again, we are a webinar, not a Zoom meeting. So you won't be able, to, your, your camera will not be visible, but you'll be able to hear us and ask questions. Claire, have a good evening and we'll follow up after the webinar in the next couple of days. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. All right, um, let's do our quick introduction and get into the content with uh, Mr. John Fisher, who is uh, my partner in this webinar, or I should say I'm his partner in this webinar. <laughs> That's really what it's about. Uh, John, if you could progress um, the slide. All right, so um, we are SCORE. National organization funded by the U.S. Small Business Administration. We've been of service to the small business community for more than 50 years. SCORE has, uh, if you go to the next slide, SCORE has over 300 chapters and 11,000 volunteers like John and myself across the country and offers free and confidential business mentoring, business tools and templates, and uh, local and online uh, seminars, webinars like, like this evening. Um, in addition, uh, during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, of course, most of, or if all of our mentoring has been virtual. John, if we can go to the next slide. So we do have uh, 60 mentors in our chapter, North Suburban Cook and Lane Counties, and um, we actually have 40 mentoring sites and hopefully post COVID we'll be back in the uh, mentoring rooms of libraries and chambers throughout our counties. But right now, virtual has worked quite well or telephone and there is even sometimes email mentoring. So uh, one more slide, I believe. 
and then we'll have John get started. All right, if you are interested in mentoring with SCORE, please send an email to scorenscLC at gmail.com or visit the website northchicago.score.org and you can select a mentor and uh, we should be in good shape regarding uh, your ability to access SCORE for mentoring services and uh, even reaching out to John Fisher af uh, after the webinar and myself who will try to help you connect with a mentor. Um, one final housekeeping note, we will be sending a separate email featuring an evaluation form. And on that form, you can also indicate if you'd like to be contacted by a mentor. So John, thank you for your patience. Uh, it's a pleasure to always work with you. This is a, a, a one of my favorite webinar topics, and I'm going to turn the program over to you and our viewers. Thank you. All right. Thanks a lot, Al. Um, and thanks as well to Claire. Uh, and i um, happy to uh, be here this evening with everyone. What we're, what we're going to do is we're, uh, the seminar is about sort of personal branding with an elevator speech. So the idea is to, for us uh, this evening, to think about what is your personal brand, what is your elevator speech, um, and why would someone want to hire you or buy your product. Um, so our, um, our objectives are to, uh, to, to understand what value you bring to the table and to um, build a new and improved elevator speech for yourself. So um, first, first thing I like to do in these is, is give us a little bit of perspective. So there's a um, very wise marketing guru uh, once who said that, you know, keep in mind that no one really wants to listen to your pitch and no one wants to buy your product. So if you start out with that as a perspective, uh, you'll know that you have an uphill battle, uh, that people are, uh, and, and it's not that they are not, uh, may, may not be interested. They may simply be engaged in something else. They may be um, busy with another project. They may be thinking about something else. And so, you need to capture their attention. So you need to get them interested and keep them interested. And that's really the, uh, the perspective. So don't think that just because um, you might have an, an interesting product or service that they will be interested and attentive. So it's not like the, uh, if you build it, they will come. Uh, it's something where you really do have to get them to understand the value, understand what it is that you bring to the table here. So, you know, here's, here's my background and uh, I won't go into this, but what I've learned in 35 years is that if you can't get their attention, you're not going to get the job. Uh, and by job, I mean, you're not going to either get a, a job that you're searching for, or they're not going to engage you or buy your product or service. So, you know, you can set up all of the, the very detailed information about your background. Uh, you know, everybody's got an interesting background, but the value that you bring to the table is the real key element here. So the, the thought is, if you want to sell something, whether it's a product or a service or yourself in, in a job interview, if you don't have a value proposition that's compelling to people, then you're always going to be competing on price. And you don't really want to be in that position. Uh, what you want to do is you want to be in a position where you are bringing value to the, in, in the conversation. And what happens is that a brand can help you focus your message. Now, we're not all going to be Coca-Cola or Harley Davidson, but we can at least create a brand for ourselves, an image, a consistent image of what we bring uh, in to our uh, uh, to, the, to the value here. So question here, and um, since we're on a, a video a webinar here, how much time do you think you have to make a first impression? Um, some people think maybe you might have three seconds, you might have eight, three minutes, five minutes. Uh, what do you think? Um, you know, we have, uh, looks like we have some people here 10 seconds uh, is what uh, someone is saying. 
Well, really what we found out is that um, the average human in the year 2000, and maybe this was the last time they studied it, but this was the last time I could get a, uh, a statistic on this, is that the average uh, attention span of a human was 12 seconds. And that in 2013, it was eight seconds. And that the average attention span of a goldfish is nine seconds. So, um, you know, sad to say that a goldfish has a better attention span than most humans. Now, what does, that, what does that mean for you? It means that you've got eight seconds to get somebody's attention. And the uh, idea is that we have passing chances. There's a little fewer passing chances right now with COVID, but under normal circumstances, you might be in an elevator, which is the whole reason or the, 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 the reason we call it an elevator speech is that it's supposed to be able to, you're supposed to be able to tell someone what you do and why they should be interested in the amount of time it takes to go up a few floors in an elevator. But, you know, you meet someone in an elevator, you meet someone at a lunch, you meet someone at a block party or a networking event, and they ask you the inevitable question, what do you do? And what kinds of things do you say here? So think about how you would normally introduce yourself in a minute or less. Uh, so just, you know, sort of think about that. And, um, most of the time, we have people um, who are doing this and making it a little bit too long, maybe a little bit too short, maybe a little bit too common. By that, I mean not necessarily uh, unique or interesting. And so you have to ask your question, how's that been working out for you? In those sorts of situations, are people eager to continue the conversation with you? Or are they looking at their watch or something else? Uh, and that's a dead giveaway that you haven't captured their attention here. So here's a, a networking nightmare. Uh, the, uh, the man in the picture says, I'm director of performance and business uh, support solutions that capitalize on mobile delivery technology for informational providers. And the woman says, oh, I specialize in digital content learning and multi-platform productions for information aggregators. We should hang out. Um, now, luckily, they're the only two people in the room that actually understand what the other one is talking about. Uh, and that often is the case with these, is that we are so excited and interested ourselves in what it is that we're doing that we believe that other people want all of the details. And that's not necessarily the case. They want the details later on but they don't necessarily want the details right there. So that's, that's the nightmare. nightmare. And, and in order to uh, avoid that nightmare, you've got to ask yourself, what, do you, what value do you bring to your client uh, world? And how do they view you? How do they view you now? And how do, they, how do you want them to view you? And if you have a brand, what, what would that brand be? You know, what would you, what would you call yourself? something to think about in these situations is that people want solutions. They don't necessarily want products. Uh, and too often, people try to sell a product or try to sell themselves as a product. And what people really do want is a solution to some problem that they have. So think about it. Theodore Levitt, who is a uh, marketing guru, is quoted as saying that people don't want to buy a quarter inch drill, they want a quarter inch hole. So they buy a quarter inch drill because that's really the only way they can get a quarter inch hole unless they hire someone with a quarter inch drill. But the idea is that if they could get the hole without having to buy the drill, that would be a solution. Of course, you know, people like myself uh, would like love to have tools. So that's a whole other uh, sort of problem. But the idea is that people, you need to look for what job they have to be done, not a product that they need. And take, for example, uh, you know, so getting to be a, a, a more common example right now is Uber. Uh, Uber became incre incredibly successful, still is, but it became successful because it wasn't a taxi cab company. So other 
other companies were looking at themselves as being taxicab companies or transportation companies. Whereas Uber looked and said, well, people want to get from point A to point B. They want to do it safely. They want to do it uh, as easily as they can. Uh, and they would like to be secure. They don't really want to fumble around and hand people their credit cards. So they created an app where you put in all of your payment information. You put in your information. The drivers put in what car they have, what the license plate is, maybe a picture of themselves, so that you actually know who it is that's going to be coming and picking you up. In a taxi cab, you have no idea who's going to come and pick you up. Right. And if you, God forbid, would lose something or leave something behind in a taxi cab, what's the first thing that they ask if you called up? What's the cab number? Right. And no one knows what the cab number is. But if you left something behind in your Uber, you've got the guy's phone number in your phone. You've got uh, where they are. You have, um, you know, you have all that information. So Uber is a perfect example here of how someone had a job. The job was getting safely from point A to point B and they fulfilled that and they became wildly successful. So looking, you, you need to look at the market really from the customer's perspective and remember that people hire products in order to get jobs done. So they really do want the job. They don't necessarily want the product. So here's another thought. Most people, including your prospects, uh, people you want to have as customers or people that you would like to uh, be interviewing, um, make their decisions based on what? Um, based on emotions most of the time, um, sadly to say, and then, or not sadly to say, I mean, it's simply a fact that people make decisions based on emotions, and then they justify their decisions by logic and facts. So there are some of us, uh, I have, my background happens to be in, uh, in IT and uh, business. I happen to think that the world runs on logic, but not everybody thinks that. And so I have convinced myself or trained myself over the years to think that people are gonna make a decision about hiring me based on an emotional reaction. They also have to base it on some sort of logic and facts, but their first in instinct is to base it on an emotional reaction. Do they think I have enough qualifications? Do they think I'm a person who can, um, who can talk to the people in their organization and find out information about it? Can I provide them with a overall solution? That's what they want to buy. And they do this for what their reasons are, not for your reasons. And the reason I say this is that a lot of times people, again, are very excited about what product they have. They're very interested. They've spent years developing it, or they have, you know, spent years doing all sorts of very interesting things in their career. And they're very excited about that, but not everyone else is going to be excited about that. So you've got to do something that shows what or thinks about what their reasons are for hiring you to either work for them or to provide a solution for them. And as always, first impressions are critical. Okay, so what about that in terms of what we're doing right now with COVID-19? So we're working from home, that's the standard. And uh, as a friend of mine says, uh, you know, is this working from home or is it living at work? Um, it's a little hard to tell sometimes how, uh, how that works out. But video is the norm for interviews, meetings, um, for all sorts of things right now that we would never have thought about in the past. Now, people are often more relaxed and casual in a video, but if you're interviewing for a job or you're talking to a prospective client, you want to have a good first impression. And having a, you know, being on video and having a, uh, a, a t-shirt on or whatever casual attire you have gives them a different impression than if you have on a sport coat or a suit or tie. Uh, uh, you know, it, it's, it's very important not to 
not to come across as, as totally formal, but it's also important to come across as being in a business-like manner here. So thinking about your video, you know, what's your background? Is your background your house? Is your background something else? I have a background that uh, is identified as being part of SCORE. Uh, it's a nice Chicago skyline here. Uh, that's a neutral. So it, it's not something that takes away from the conversation here. Um, as with everyone else, I have a dog, I have uh, other people living in the house, and I periodically have noises. And so um, we have to learn how to mute uh, and or close our video as appropriate when these things are happening. But you're often selling on video right now, which is a whole other, um, whole other way to look at things. So how do you get people to think about hiring you for the job? And you've got only eight seconds. So the idea is you better be ready for that. So the eight seconds to get their attention, to get them to engage in a conversation, and that's about it. So I've um, um, sort of put together a four-step process here. So the first one is, who are you? What's your name? Uh, and what do you do? Make sure this is an action verb. Uh, and who are your customers? It, it's important to understand who your customers are, who your audience is. Uh, do you, for example, only work with medium, small and medium-sized businesses? Do you work in manufacturing? Uh, do you do stuff for a specific industry? Are you in healthcare? Are you in insurance? Or what are you, what, what is it that you're in? So that they understand that you're in a specific, you're, you're targeting for a specific group. And if they're in that group, that's fine. If they're not in that group, then you really don't want to go on and have a, a lengthy conversation with them about your product or service because it's not relevant to them. And the last one, and the most important from my perspective is, what value do you bring to the table? Why would I want to hire you? Why would I want you to provide a solution to me? So those are the four uh, the four steps here in, in creating your, uh, your elevator speech. So what you probably don't want to include is maybe the company name. Um, you know, you might have a recognizable company. So if you work for, let's say, a nonprofit, a charity, Red Cross, or something like that, then you may want to mention the name of the company. But if you work for a, a small company that's not necessarily recognizable, then you don't want to clutter the communication with that information. What happens is that that becomes noise in a conversation. So you want to get specific about what information you want to provide and what information you don't need to provide here. Uh, titles, you know, I'm vice president of this or I'm, you know, senior director of that. Um, people may or may not care about that, but in the eight seconds that you have to get their attention, it's not something that uh, I would put first. Adjectives or adverbs. I'm the best senior vice president uh, I've ever known, right? I'm, I'm the you know, most effective person at painting your house. Um, those, those just sort of fly away. And you don't want to talk about how you do what you do, because you can't do that normally in eight seconds you want to talk about what the end result is, what's the value, not how you do that value. And specifically, a business label can sometimes be misleading. So if you say, hey, I'm an attorney, or I'm an engineer, or I'm a trainer, people have an idea about what that is in their head. So they may have a good or a bad impression of attorneys, and that will flow right into you. Uh, that's something that, um, you know, that, that you want to avoid because what you want to do is you want your position to be unique. And, you know, industry jargon, as we saw in the other uh, situation here, and I'm um, turning off my phone here because it's making all kinds of crazy noises. So you don't want to have a lot of industry jargon. You want to be very clear and very simple in terms of what it is that you say. So let's think about this. Here's an example. Hi, I'm John Fisher and I'm a consultant and I've been doing this for over 30 years, which is a typical thing. That's what I used to say to people. Um, problem is that that's boring. 
um, who, who cares how long I've been doing it? I've been doing this for 30 years and I still haven't gotten it right. Is that, is that the idea? Plus, I'm a consultant. I'm the guy who's going to ask you for your watch, tell you the time, give you your watch back with a, a, a bill. Uh, that's what a lot of people think of as consultants. So how about, hi, I'm John, and I help mid-sized companies get rid of technology headaches. This is more to the point. Now, first of all, notice that I took off my last name because that's just clutter. That's noise. The target audience is mid-sized companies. So all of a sudden, I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about my client. I'm talking about them. And I, what I do is I help them get rid of technology headaches. Lord knows everyone has technology headaches these days. And so my pitch is that that's what I do. I take care of technology headaches for you. Now, this isn't a perfect elevator pitch, but it's certainly better than I'm a consultant and I've been doing this for over 30 years. So um, you know, here's some examples. I, um, I had a client uh, several years ago who was in the medical device, uh, they did prosthetic devices, or they did the programming for that. And, and so they would talk about prosthetic devices and, you know, medical blah, blah, and healthcare and all the importance of that. But when we got together and talked about what value they bring, you know, I said, okay, you create devices that help people walk. That's pretty interesting. That's something that gets my attention not prosthetic device, biomedical engineering, all that sort of thing, okay? So the idea is get something that is interesting for your first part of the elevator pitch. I put efficiency back in your day. Um, you know, everyone's looking for maybe a little bit more time in their day. Uh, and, I, you know, I make sure companies hire the right people. If you are a staffing firm, you don't want to say, hey, I'm a staffing firm, I, I work for a staffing firm and I'm really good at it. You want to say, my goal is to help companies hire the right people. So your focus is right away on the client, not on yourself. Uh, so here's, uh, you know, others make comp help companies make critical decisions more easily. So these are just some examples of how you can put value and more interest in what it is that you're uh, that you're saying here. So um, the ideal response for any of this is, "Wow, that's interesting. Uh, tell me more." So now, now you've got more than eight seconds. Okay, now you've got time that you can actually talk about what it is that you want to do. Or they might say, hey, "Wow, well, how do you do that? How do you how do you put efficiency back in the day?" Now, you don't want to get caught in the trap of then saying, oh, wow, they've asked me how. Now I need to go into this long diatribe about what it is that I do, and I make this, and I do that, and I do something else. Um, you know, they want a more of an explanation of how you go about doing it, not how you do it. Um, and you might get the ideal response, wow, my company's been looking for somebody that does that. Okay, uh, and let's find some more time to talk because often, again, if you're in a passing situation, that person is off to a meeting or doing something else, but they're thinking, wow, okay, I, we really need to talk. So let's find some time. So those are the kinds of responses that you want to get from your elevator pitch. So let's think, uh, to, uh, to, uh, do, we've got a worksheet here together. And you can think about this. Uh, we, if we have time later on, we can actually go into uh, some elevator pitches. And if you want to put some in the chat or in the Q and A, um, go right ahead and do that. And we can uh, take a look at those after uh, uh, after we've gone through the session here. But you know, the four steps: Who are you? What do you do? And for whom? You know, what's your market? What's your client? And then the acronym with them: What's in it for me? From a client perspective, what's the value that you're bringing to the table? So if you put those four together, this can be easily two sentences, and that's all you need. You just need a couple of sentences because they're asking you what, the, what you do, and they may be interested or they may not be interested. As I said before, if your target is mid-sized engineering companies, 
and they are a large um, healthcare organization, then there's not a fit. And it's really, as, as they say in sales, no is the second best answer. First best answer is yes, I'll, I'll hire you or I'll, I'll buy your product. The second best answer is no, I don't want your product because then you're not spending any more time talking to people who actually don't want your product. The worst answer is, oh, maybe, uh, yeah, maybe uh, give me a call later on and we'll talk about it. But, you know, so you want to be able to focus their attention on something that's important to them. A friend of mine says you, you want to talk to them in their language and how they view the world. And that will get you much more, um, much more interest from them. So think about the, uh, the worksheets we can, uh, we're going to go through each step and then we'll, you know, take some notes as we go through. And then, like I said, we can review those as a group later on. So here's, you know, name or again, or organization. If you work for a company, if you're selling some, if you're selling real estate and you work for, you know, Baird Warner or, uh, uh one of the other large organizations, you know, that might be a benefit, but I know uh, people these days are using a lot of smaller online companies. So that may be a hindrance. They're, you're thinking, oh, you know, I work for a Baird Warner and they're saying, well, yeah, that's, that's old style real estate. I'm not interested in that. So tell them who you are because they're going to buy from you. They're not going to buy from Baird Warner. Okay. So if it's got high value, do it. If it doesn't have high value, then you are the one that needs to make the personal connection here. And again, maybe only your first name. If you give them all your entire name, they may, they may forget. They may then be embarrassed to ask you what your actual, the full name is. Uh, and you can always exchange the contact information later. So step two is what do you do? So I work with, or I help. I enable, come up with a verb of what it is that you do when you are providing the solution to your clients that does the job that they need to have done. And so, you know, not, you know, I, um, you know, I have 30 years of experience, you know, that's very nice. And that may come in later on, but it's not going to be a selling point. So what's your target market? So this is a noun, what, what is your, you might just say clients. If you are cross industry, um, you know, you're selling something like uh, executive coaching, uh, your clients might be executives. Uh, you might say mid-sized businesses, uh, you might target nonprofits. Uh, you know, what is the market that you're trying to target? What are the, what are the types of clients that you're looking for? And again, if you are doing this for a job interview, then you're, you know, I am looking for insurance companies. I'm looking for, um, you know, various uh, manufacturing companies. I'm looking for other things that they will, it will help them hone in that you have experience in their industry. So step four. Now, you know, this is, how you bring value to the table. This is the what's in it for, for me, me being the client. So what do they gain or what might they lose? Uh, one thing you can do is you can say a verb and then a noun. You can say that I avoid risk. I, um, you know, eliminate embarrassment. I save um, money. I uh, help, um, you know, sell products or services or whatever, whatever their particular problem is. Because if you think about it, most people are not gonna hire you for either yourself or for your product if they don't have a problem. So the key question here, and this is what you wanna get into in terms of the conversation, is what is the business problem that you're trying, that you provide a solution to, you know? And if it's a general, business solution, then you can say that. But as you're having the conversation, if they say, wow, that's interesting, tell me more, you might say, well, 
instead of talking more about yourself, you might ask them a question about what is it that's their biggest problem? What's their biggest headache these days? What are, what needs to, uh, what, what is, what is it that they need enhanced or eliminated or refined? However you, however you want to look at that. But the idea is to provide value to the client. So put it all together. So I'm step one and I do this for these clients and to help them save money. So that's, it's as simple as that. So here you go. I'm John Fisher. I help companies save time and money selecting technology solutions. Uh, or I help my clients take the mystery out of technology change. Or, you know, I help companies turn technology issues into higher profits. So here's a reason I'm going through three, three of these is you need to have multiples. You need to have multiple approaches to this because as with, with everything, the first version isn't the, probably the, going to be the best. Uh, the, but it's very important to do that first version to get started with doing this. And so, you know, you, you come up with an elevator pitch. And then you want to validate it with people outside of your company, with potential clients. You may want to validate it with your spouse or with your children or with your neighbor to say, hey, you know, does this, does this sound right? Uh, again, I've been in technology for a long time. I'm used to pe people having no idea what it is that I do uh, because, you know, it's like, it's like being a mathematician. It's like, really, what, what does a mathematician do, right? You sit around and add numbers or, you know, it's a little bit unclear to me what that is that they, they do. Same way with me. I work in the technology field. Well, actually, I help businesses save money. That's a very simple thing. It has nothing to do with technology. What it has to do with is a lot of times businesses are spending money on technology. And so I go right for the value proposition, but validate it with people. If they don't like it, then your clients may not like it. If you have two or three elevator pitches, then that means depending on who you're talking to or what the situation is, you might pick one or another of these. So preparation is key. Preparation is very vital to, to what it is that you need to do here. So uh, think about it, write down your improved elevator speech here. And then again, I'm what your name is, and I do this for these clients, and I help transform, modernize, launch, improve whatever it is that, that you uh, that you're thinking about. And again, keep in mind that it's the job that they need to have done is what you're helping them do. That's where you bring value to the table. So if you have an elevator, elevator speech, it's easy for me to say, I guess, um, put it in the uh, Q&A. And again, we can talk about it later on if we have a little bit of time here. So the, uh, again, it's the, the first draft of anything is often interesting, but not necessarily convincing. So let it roll around in your head. Think about it. Repeat. Repeat it to yourself. Repeat it to other people. Because, again, you only have eight seconds so you want to be crisp and you want to be very clear when people say, what is it that you do? Or, you know, how do you, how can you help me? Boom, you've got the answer right away. Um, so create multiple, uh, multiple versions, uh, revise, start over again. You, you know, sometimes in the past, I have just taken all of my elevator pitches and thrown them all out the window and said, okay, I'm going to start totally new. I may be reinventing what I do, um, or I may be more likely, instead of reinventing what I'm doing, I am putting a different emphasis on it that helps my clients become more clear in terms of how I can help them. And the other thing is that your elevator pitch changes over time. Uh, there are times when people need to save money. There are times when people who need to get more uh, information from their customers. Uh, you know, there are different perspectives. Right now, in the, in the pandemic, people may need to get closer to their customers or people may, may need to come up with totally different solutions 
uh, that involved what they're doing. Look at the restaurant industry, right? The restaurant industry had typically been, let's have a bunch of tables, we'll put them in a room, we'll seat people there, we'll have waiters and waitresses and uh, servers, I guess, and you know all of that. Right now, that doesn't work, or it's starting to come back, but the, the restaurants that were really successful all of a sudden said, hey, let's set up a takeout business. And uh, one restaurant that I know actually has takeout, and they call every client that has ordered food from them and say, how was it? How is everything? Is there anything? Is there any problem? You know, it's more customer touch. Uh, and, and that, in some ways, is easier to do now than it was when they had, you know, 50 people at the tables because they were running around doing various things. Now they can take their time and call people. They may call them a day later or whatever, but you know, they can really uh, touch base with their customers. And what's what the result of that is that their business has in, increased dramatically. It hasn't gone in a downturn. So think about those. Um, and then again, when it's when they say, tell me more, you've got to be ready for that. So the, the, the phases here or the stages are um, the verbal pitch, the elevator speech. Then what I have, and, and may be helpful for you as well, is I have something that's a one page, um, I call it my business on a page. So it's a one page description of what it is, what value I bring to my clients and what are some examples of where I have done this in the past. Then you might create, uh, again, because I'm in the, in the consulting business, a professional profile. They may want to know how many projects have you had that, that look like this? What have you saved? How much money have you saved on this project? How much time have you saved on that project? And then if you have more time, you may want to do a formal presentation. But you need to have that ready. Because if you've gotten their attention and they say, wow, tell me more, and then they say, well, let's set up a time to talk. You don't want to say, well, you know, I've got to really prepare my presentation. So it'll take me a month or so to get ready for the uh, conversation. Um, that's, that's not going to fly. So you want to, be, you want to be ready for success. You want to be ready for when, you, uh, when, when they say, hey, let's talk more. So the idea is when you're now having a conversation with them, ask questions. You don't continue to tell them things. Um, and remember, you have two ears and you have one mouth and use them in that order uh, and get them involved in the conversation and find out what their problems are and what, their, what solutions they need. And then that is what you want to try to sell, not a particular product. Okay. So you know, you may have a very wonderful product that does a, a lot of very interesting things, but they may not need that. They may need something else. And you may be able to modify your product or your service specifically for what their need is. But if you keep talking about what your product is, they're going to say, well, it, it doesn't apply to me. It's not, it's not relevant. Uh, so, so think about it again as a solution. So here's another, um, another thought, and then we'll get into some examples here, because it looks like we've got some examples um, uh, in the Q&A, is um, you know, the, the scenario approach. Um, the, the idea is what is the business context or what is the mission that you want to do? What is the impact that you have? Um, a friend of mine, is a uh, is is a consultant and he helps businesses that are that are manufacturing businesses that have operations in Vietnam. Now that's totally specific, right? But you know, he goes on to explain in his story or in his scenario here that he is married to a Vietnamese woman. He knows the language, he knows the culture, he's been to Vietnam multiple times. Um, he is very versed in how to do business in Vietnam. And so he can help small businesses that are manufacturing companies actually um, get, um, get their operations much more efficient in, uh, in Vietnam. So think of a story, think of a scenario when they're, when they're asking you to have the conversation here. 
Um, and don't forget, be prepared, uh, be very enthusiastic um, and get their contact information and then follow up with a proposal or an idea. And the, you know, it's, it's, you have your eight seconds or 10 seconds, you then may have a minute, then you may have 10 minutes, and then you may have an hour. So be prepared for each of those stages in the journey here. So that's, um, that's the webinar for now. Uh, Al, do we have uh, questions from the audience Yes, here? thank you, John. I'm really good. We've got a lot of folks who have actually shared their uh, elevator uh, pitches, and I think we should get your response to them. So I'm going to use first names only, and uh, I'm going to start. Uh, my name is uh, Donovan. I teach skills to develop oral skills for students of music. And okay. uh, Donovan works in the performance ear training category. Okay. So um, not, uh, you know, I, I don't think I'm in the audience for that sort of thing, but what um, my first reaction would be, um, what, what was that, oral? Yes. And um, it's, yeah, and I think because uh, what the category is performance ear training for musicians. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. So, so, so the some... audience, yeah, the audience would know, would know what that means. What I'm thinking though, is that it's going to be more effective if that, that sounds jar like a jargon sort of thing to me. So what is it that you're doing? Do you help people speak more clearly? Do you help people, um, you know, sing better or, you know, project their voices? Um, you know, the, the, what, are the, what are the specific things that happen there? And think about it from this perspective, while that jargon may be good for someone in that industry, you may be asked what you do by someone who's totally outside of that industry. However, they may know someone that's in that industry. And if they can't translate what you said, you know, they will say to their friend in the industry, well, I met this person and they seem to do something in the industry, but I don't know what, maybe you want to get in touch with them. That's not as convincing a story as if you would say, hey, I met... Donovan, he teaches people how to sing, um, you know, more clearly. Right. Right. Does, that, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let me, uh, I'm Jeffrey. I fix product launch failures for mid-sized companies. Okay. Okay. So uh, that's a, that's a good one. The, um, the, the it has all of the, uh, all of the elements in here. So mid-sized companies. Um, you help prevent launch failures. Now, launching, I'm assuming they're launching new products or are they launching marketing initiatives or, you know, maybe need to be a little more specific on what kind of launching uh, you're looking at. Uh, launch maybe new offices. Uh, so there's, there's, that could mean different things in here. So I would say that that's a, that's a really good start maybe a little bit more specific on what it is that you launch. Right, specific, which product, yeah. What types of product yeah, yeah. launch. All right, we'll go right. to another one. Is I it am, a product, is it a service? Right. Um, I am Laura and help entrepreneurs tell their story and build their brand to attract and retain fabulous customers. Okay, I, I like that. You're, you've got, You've got a specific audience here, entrepreneurs. Um, the uh, I would I would personally take out fabulous, um, while it, it may be um, it and, and that may just be my opinion. So definitely, um, definitely push you know uh, run this by other people to see how they how they react to that. But um, you know I think that the um, the, the the end result could be fabulous, but it would be better if the customer said that as opposed to to you saying that. Um, but uh, you know, it sounds good. I think I think you've got a good uh, crisp delivery there, so that uh, that I think would uh, would work. Again, run it by somebody and see how see how they like it. Okay, let's try another one. 
a little longer, but uh, looking for your critique. My name is Monica. Mm -hmm. I am a certified destination specialist for Hawaii and Alaska. I curate customized itineraries for travelers in North America who like to explore exotic destinations. This helps them to save time on research, get valuable inputs on must do and unique experiences, thereby getting the most out of their holiday. Okay, so that's that's a lot um, for me to take in. Um, you kind of had me at um, the exotic um, vacation or exotic experiences, what, what, what was in the, the beginning there. Um, it was, you know, uh, yeah, well, I curate customized itineraries for travelers yeah, in North America yeah. like to explore exotic so, destinations. Exotic destinations, that's it. So curating sounds like a museum to me, um, but exotic destinations sounds pretty interesting. So I help people get to and enjoy their exotic destination. Um, you know, the planning the itinerary, I think that would be assumed, or that's something that you would talk about a little bit later on. But in order to get their attention, you don't, you, you went in a little bit into the how, which I would reserve for later on to just, but, but that exotic destination is what, is what uh, triggered me. But you see what happened? I forgot what it was because there were all those other words yeah. after that. And so you had me at that and then you lost me. Uh, and so that's, that's the value of having a very crisp, clear, here's mm -hmm. what I do. And if I say, oh my God, I love, I'm a couch potato. I don't go outside of my house ever, you know, then, okay, I'm not the guy you want to talk to. But if you say, you know, exotic destinations, and I'm thinking, wow, that's really cool. I would like to do mm -hmm. that. Then you can talk about the house. Is that helpful? Sounds, yeah, I think that's a good edit and I'm more focused. Mm -hmm. um, we've got several more coming in, so please stay with us. Okay. Um, I help individuals or families take control of their finances by understanding how money works. Okay. Interesting. Um, so, so that is, um, that, that right away, that is much better than saying I'm a financial planner, right? Um, because everybody has their opinion of it. So you've gotten into, into helping people and you're helping families, so you've got the specific audience in there. It's very crisp, um, and I think that the um, you know the the it may be. Um, well, read that again, Al. The the last part of it. Um, understanding how money works. Okay, yeah, that's it. Understanding how money works. That's a little confusing to me, um, because. Um, um, maybe understanding how their money works for them yeah. because what they don't necessarily want to know is how money works. I don't want to get into the options market or maybe I do, but you know, that's a whole other thing, but how does it apply to me? So how does money work for them? Right. Right. Because the money has yeah. to work for financial security. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. I aim and even I... a dog like that. No, I know. I have to. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, I'm going to work on that. I'm going to work on that. I aim to guide those who desire to become small business owners with the legal registration process. Okay. Hey, I help people start their dream business. You know, um, that that is um, uh, to me. That's that's what that's what I'm seeing here. Um, I take care of the paperwork for starting your dream business, um, you know, because you're doing all of the filings and various things like that. So, so more on how they're valuing it and less on how you're providing that information, but, you know, good, good. And, uh, and relatively short here. Um, we have okay. any more? No, I've got a few more um, and, a, and a really good question. So we've got a few minutes left, so we'll take advantage of it. My name is Mark. I can guarantee 
safety for your staff without them having to abandon their ability and skill to do the job that is expected of them. Okay. So that that's not clear to me what it is that you do. So are you a bodyguard or do you make um, the environment in a manufacturing plant more, um, you know, safe or safe for uh, reduce um, accidents and such. So, so that, you know, the, the, the it's, it's not, um, I would, I would recommend being more direct in terms of, you know, what it is that you're doing here, but good start. Good start. All these, all these have been fantastic yeah. starts. Yeah. Really Thank good. you all for submitting these. Um, uh, a quick question, and then we'll go to a few more. Can I give my personal mm -hmm. card at the end of the elevator speech? I think that would seem important, but I'll yeah. leave it to you, Jeff. Well, I mean, it, obviously, if they're interested, um, yeah. yes. Um, and uh, definitely um, what what is more, I think what is more effective is if you get their card at the end of your elevator speech. Um, you know, to, to say, you know, if this is something... If this is something that you're interested in, let's get together. Yeah. Um, can, how, how can I contact you? Because giving them your card means they've now got to do something to contact you. If you can get their information, A, it shows they're a little more interested, and B, it allows you to be the person to make the direct contact back. Right. You know, I have an interesting response here. Um, we were talking earlier uh, Donovan, I teach skills to develop oral skills for students of music. He's revised. Mm -hmm. I teach the necessary skills to learn music by ear. Oh, interesting. Okay. Okay. Uh, and, and I would, I mean, I would shorten that even. I help people learn music by ear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so it's, it, it is, um, it's it's crisp and it's clear, but yeah, great. That that's a fantastic example of how just doing this and just talking about it mm -hmm. all of a sudden evolves. helps clarify this in your mind. Great, fantastic. Evolves. Gosh, we have two or three more at least, um, and then a question I'd like to get to. But let's. Uh, sure. I'm in the service industry. I help senior citizens live a more fulfilling life on a daily basis. Okay. Okay. Um, that is, uh, that's, that's pretty, pretty compelling. You've got senior citizens, um, you've got more fulfilling life on a daily basis. Um, you know, I think that that's got a lot of the elements in here. Um, maybe, um, uh, live a better life as opposed to fulfilling, um, you know, because fulfilling may sound a little bit um, overworked or overused. So I help them, you know, live, live to their fullest maybe, but uh, otherwise I think that's a, I think that's a good start. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I help mid-sized companies go from scattershot to focused in their marketing. Wow. Okay. That's, um, that's a, that's a, a laudable, um, <laughs> service because a lot of companies are very scattershot. So, uh, yeah, you know, I actually kind of like that because it, it's, it, it emphasizes image words, scattershot and focused. Uh, so, you know, I help people go from scattershot mm -hmm. to focused. Um, right. a, a challenge with that might be people may not want to hear that their approach is scattershot. Um, you know, yeah. uh, that may, may put them off. I don't know. It may or may not, but sometimes, you know, just saying, you know, I help people focus their marketing activities on the right audience would be a much more positive. And then if they're interested in that, then you can say, well, Hey, I, you know, how many different ways are you doing marketing right now? Um, and, and so that, that may be good, but, you know, there was a certain uh, value in the scattershot. Uh, again, you know, it's just my opinion here on, on a lot of these things. Okay. Right. Um, and Shannon, I design highly personalized getaways for moms. I help spouses save time 
and take out the guesswork of planning the ultimate ultimate escape for her. Oh, okay, okay. So um, I like that. Um, I, I think the first sentence I think was good. The second sentence I got a, a little more confused. Although what it sounds like is that you help spouses plan a surprise getaway for their loved one, right? Um, so, so that may be, who's your audience here, I guess, is a question. Is your audience the mom or is your audience the spouse of the mom? Um, and maybe both. And so you may want to have two right. um, um, elevator pitches for that, you know. So because if, if it's like me, if my wife wants to get that getaway, she will tell me to go talk to you to do that. <laughs> to yeah, do that. Exactly. Okay. Right. Whereas, sure. Right. Um, so, so make sure it's, uh, make sure it's focused here. Right. So it looks, um, looks like we are getting closer. We're actually over our time here, I think. Are we, Al? Are we? Yeah. Well, the folks want to stay for another minute. Yeah. If we can do another, just yeah, a couple I'm, of quick ones. If yeah. we, if we uh, sure. Sort of don't mind. Um, Absolutely. I think this is, uh, okay, I make it easy for you to meet up with your friends over good, good, good food. I make it easy to meet up for you to meet up with your friends over good food. Okay. So um, I guess I'm not sure how that's a business. Um, and so that that's just the problem that I've got is if I want to meet up with my good friends over food, I'll give them a call and say, hey, you want to go out for uh, steak or pizza or Thai food or whatever. So there must be something in there that I'm missing in terms of how how you're providing value over and above me just doing it. Now, maybe in speculation, People are busy and they don't have time to do that. And so that's where your focus is. But that may be something to go into your uh, into your elevator pitch there. Right. I'm going to offer one more question, like kind of a general closing question for, for you, John. Uh, sure. Kind of a steps back to the marketing uh, strategy behind the elevator speech. And any idea of where one can come up with what or who the target clients need help with in order to be more specific with the elevator speech. So it sounds like a marketing, a target marketing question in order to. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's an it's an interesting interesting question. I don't know how um, how old people are in the audience, but some people might remember the Walkman, um, which was a. Um, a cassette recorder where you could take your own music around. Now, this is ancient news, but uh, the, the guy who was the CEO of Sony, who came up with the Walkman, he would sit in the park and watch people and watch what they did. And they gravitated toward music. And he thought, wow, the problem is that they can't, they're not close to their music or they're not close to enough music or they're not close to the right music. What if I gave them the ability to have their music with them at all times. Okay, and that started the whole uh, music, um, you know, MP3, Walkman, um, iPod, the whole, the whole kind of thing. So what you, what you might look at is what are people doing and what is giving, what are, what is giving them problems? So small companies, you might see what, you know, are there returns? You know, are there are too many products being returned? Are too many products broken? Or what? You know, so so that that could be that could be a specific question. But what you may say is, I help companies grow, uh, if it's for a company, right? And that could be a lot of different ways. A lot of different ways you help them grow. So then you ask them. What is it that is your biggest problem? So you've got to have, you've got to catch their attention before you can ask them that question. So I would recommend you come up with something enticing for them. You know, I help them grow, I help them increase profits um, and, um, and go from there. Tremendous. Okay. Good, good questions. Amazing. Uh, 
opportunity for folks to get uh, some insights. And John, thank you so much. Let's do the final slide and uh, we will close out. Um, there's a reminder of how to request a mentor, the, the Gmail account for our chapter and the northchicago.org website. Um, we will be sending out a PDF of the presentation from this evening, also with a reminder of how to request a mentor and an evaluation form will be uh, coming your way as well in the next couple of days. So everybody, thank you so much, John. Again, always thank enjoy you. doing this webinar with you because we get so many interesting uh, is yeah, that, uh, yeah, it's amazing. It? Yeah, it really yeah, is. It's, We've done this a number it's of very times. very good. And thanks for hanging out in and with everybody uh, this evening. Okay. And uh, reach out to us if there's anything more we can do for you. On behalf of SCORE, John Fisher, and all of our mentors, have a wonderful evening. Take care. Take care. Stay safe.